And we are back with some more Seattle Kraken franchise mode. And in this one, we are going to get year number three underway. But first off, we're going to take a look at the Hall of Fame inductions. You have Sedin, Daniel Sedin to be specific. Then you have Rod Brindamore, Roberto Luongo, and Daniel Alfredson all getting the call to the Hall of Fame. And next thing I want to do is I want to send a couple of guys down or put some guys up for trade because we do have 29 players on our roster. Currently in goal, we have Saros and Odiger. That's obviously not changing. On defense, you have Pelik, Mata, Kulak, Hughes, Bowie, Nudivara, Aho, Nemich, and Jensen. We're going to shop Jensen and see what we can get for him. Because as we can see, we have nine defensemen. Not going to need him for sure. For forwards, you have Duclair, Kempe, Pearson, Baddock, Fast, Nechushkin, Lundestrom, Fantilli, Stahl, Koklachev, Wright, Kelman, Kokaniemi, Coronado, Sirnik, Van Sickle, Olison and Johnston. We're going to send down Johnston and Olison. They're only a one-star current ability. They're not going to be able to play at this level just yet. So it looks like all we'll be getting for Nick Jensen is a sixth. Uh, I think, you know what, I'll take the chance setting him through waivers. I, I would rather see if we could hold on to him as a backup player. So I'll send him to the AHL. And I did want to trade Koklachev, but the problem is he has a no-trade clause, so we can't even offer him out on a trade, so... I'm just going to send him to the AHL. Maybe someone will claim him. Maybe not. I don't know. But regardless, we don't have space for him on this team. So he's going to the AHL. And I think the rest of these guys are going to be playing for spots in preseason. So I don't know why Lundestrom scratched as a two and a half star ability, four star potential. But, you know, Gerard a lot better get him in there as part of the preseason because if he doesn't, then I, I don't know what he's thinking. So the preseason has completed. Let's take a look at the grades of everyone. Odinger with a 69 grade and Saros with a 54, so I wonder what kind of save percentage he had. Uh, ooh, 873 in five games. A 937 for Odinger, though, so safe to say he should probably be the starter going into this season. How about defensemen? So the best grade is Nudevar with a 67. Defensively, uh, Kulak and Nemich were not too impressive. I mean, we'll keep all the defensemen on board at the moment because this is eight defensemen, but... Not impressed with Kulak there, nor Nemich, although he's only 19, so I can understand that, but expect more out of Kulak for sure, being the 29-year-old. Everyone else was pretty solid, though. Forward-wise, you have Kempe and Pearson with the best grades at 64, a 67 offensive grade for Kempe, and best defensive grade is Pearson with a 62. Everybody else... And uh, not too impressive, but that's to be expected, I suppose. Hopefully guys like Shane Wright and Van Sickle and Lundestrom can see some growth this year. And obviously other prospects like Sirnik and Coronado and Fantilli. So I think I'm going to cut Kelman here. I'm going to send him to the AHL. And Baddock really has not simulated well in his time here. So I think I'm going to offer him out on the trade since he's a two and a half star. He'll probably get claimed if I put him on waivers, presuming he needs to go on waivers, so I, I may as well just shop him. So Montreal is willing to give a fourth. Uh, Lilligren from Toronto, really? How is he in this game? Two-star ability, two-and-a-half-star potential. And then there's Bear Hughes, apparently, from the Washington Capitals. One-and-a-half-star ability, two-and-a-half-star potential. I'd rather have Lilligren, I think. A fourth from Tampa and Jacob Lilia from Columbus. I like Toronto's offer, honestly, with Lilligren, but then if I take Lilligren... Who'd be getting cut off our defensive core? Maybe we just send Nemich down to the AHL just to get him used to North American ice, I suppose. Yeah, I think we'll do that for now. And then we will accept that trade from Toronto for Timothy Lilligren. And on our final roster is Saros and Odiger, of course, in goal. Mata, Pelik, Kulak, Hughes, Bowie, Nudevara, Aho, and Lilligren on defense. And at forward, you have Pearson, Nichushkin, Kempe, Coronado, Van Sickle, Stahl, Wright, Kokaniemi, Lundestrom, Fantilli, Duclair, Fast and Cyrnik. So I don't know what's up with some of these players that are being waived, but apparently Nolan Foote has been placed on waivers, <laughs> along with the likes of guys like McIsaac, Hayton, <laughs> Lankinen, Shane Pinto is also there. So I, like I said, I don't know what's going on here, but I am certainly going to make a claim for Nolan Foote. Now that we have Nolan Foote, we're going to have to trade somebody. I'm thinking that's going to be Nachushkin because uh, wasn't impressed by his preseason performance, and honestly, he didn't have too many points last year either, only 23. The best we could get apparently for him is a fourth. I'll take it. All right, so expectations for this season. 
I'm not expecting playoffs, but I'm at least expecting some improvement for sure. I mean, <laughs> that shouldn't be too hard to do, given that last season we were 22, 52, and 8. So if we could get like 30 wins this year even, like that'd be, I think, pretty reasonable. I mean, if we do make the playoffs, great, but I'm not expecting it, honestly. We still have a ways to go, but we're getting there. We're definitely getting there. You know, we have Odinger, who's three and a half star ability now. You have Luke Hughes, who's a three star ability. Of course, we have Shane Wright. We got Nolan Foote off of waivers just now. Lundestrom, Fantilli out of the draft just this year. He's already a two and a half star ability. So I had to send down Aho recently because he wasn't playing well, and I also had to... Uh, make some space for Kokachev, who I called back up because we had quite a few injuries at Ford recently. But besides that, we're 7 18 and 1 on December 1st. Not impressed to say the least. We could definitely be doing better. As we take a look at our top point scores, you have Jordan Stahl with 13 points <laughs> in 26 games. What about defenseman? Luke Hughes with 9. I mean, I, I guess that's okay. Odinger with a 9-10, Solace with a 9-03. But I think for where we are now, we could definitely be doing better record-wise. I mean, we obviously still have a young team and we still have a lot of growing to do, but we shouldn't be this bad, I don't think, at this point. I'm considering firing Gallant, honestly. I might want to hire someone who favors prospects over uh, a balanced approach for favoring veterans. Not going to do that now, but it's something that's certainly... It's on my mind for sure. So he's not going to have a significant role by, right now, but I think I want to hire Davis Payne as an assistant coach just for the time being because I think he might be a potential replacement for Gerard Gallant if things don't work out. So before heading into the trade deadline, there are a couple of players who I want to renew. That would be Saros and Pelik. Uh, ooh, Saros wants 8.6. Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Well, Pelic, 6.4 for six years with a no movement clause. Huh. Honestly, Saros has only played 14 games this year. Odinger has played 35. And Saros in the games that he has played, 886. I'd rather just trade him. Just get him out of here, honestly. <laughs> get some good for him. Because he, he does have the four-star current ability, but he certainly is not simulating like it. So Toronto is offering Rodion Amirov who looks like a really good goal scorer as we see his offensive read at 16, shooting accuracy 16, puck handling 17, and getting open 18, which, I mean, that that has all the makings of a good goal scorer. Unfortunately, it looks like he only has 10 goals this year with Toronto, and a 56 grade for that matter, but he's only 22, and it's not like he's going to be costing us $8 million like Saros, <laughs> so we may as well take it. And this is by far the best offer that's on the table, so... Let's do it. And apparently they rejected their own trade offer. I mean, I I don't know how to explain that, but <laughs> they 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 literally offered that as we uh, as we take a look here. Yeah, Amira for Saros. That's what they offered and I I don't get that, but okay, let's discuss it again. <laughs> I'll give them the rights to share a bar and he's only a half star ability still at 21 years of age. Still not. Okay, I'll add in Tampa's fourth. It says they'll probably accept this. So, Saros, Sherabarin, and a fourth for Amirov. And there it is. Saros, a fourth, and Sherabarin for Rodion Amirov. Complete trade, and welcome to Seattle, Rodion Amirov. And it also means that Pavel Frank, who is now on our roster full-time, and that we're going to have to send somebody down here. So, oof, man. Van Sickle really has not been great this year. Only six points in 32 games, minus 14, 53 grade. He might be able to use some time in the AHL. I don't want that four-star potential to go to waste. So we did re-sign Pelik. I gave him basically what he wanted, a little bit less money. But I decided to give it to him because he's been pretty good for us throughout this entire GM mode so far. And we're going to need an emergency goaltender signing here as Odinger just went down with an injury. So that means we have one healthy goaltender left. <laughs> at the moment so we're gonna have to sign hunter miska here so we are at the trade deadline now and there's no other moves i think we could really make considering we are exactly <laughs> at the cap floor when we traded sorrows so uh, i mean we don't have much flexibility in that respect we've been better lately we're 21 37 and 3 so it looks like we'll be um, <laughs> better than last season at the very least I take a look at the stats. Duclair currently leads our forwards in points with 39, so nothing new there. Defensively, you have Luke Hughes with 20 points. Madison Bowie leads with 22. And a goal, currently we have Frank Hu and Miska because obviously Odinger is injured. So there's not much to be done, really. We just have to ride out the season once again, and 
I think in the off season we're gonna have to consider the future of Gerard Gallant because uh, I'm not liking the progress. It's year three, and at this point we should be at, at least you know. I mean, we definitely improved this year, and I mean the year's not over, but based off what we're seeing so far. We improved, but only very slightly. Not not the amount that I was hoping for, for sure. So we finished the season 27, 52, and 3. So I, I think that's our best season by literally two points. Or actually, not even. we Because we had more overtime and shootout losses our first year. We actually only had 57 points this year compared to 63 our first year. So all I'm saying is I need to see some significant improvement next year for sure. I mean, even taking a look at the uh, the manager news, it says Gerard Gallant's job in jeopardy. Management's patience with Gerard Gallant is reportedly wearing thin. I mean, yeah, that's pretty accurate. Now let's take a look at the final stats for the season. So injured players, Luke Hughes with 27 points in 75 games. Uh, not too shabby. I think that's a career high. That should be a career high. So overall, pretty good season from him. Definitely want to see more next year, though. And as for our active roster, 52 points for Duclair. Yeah, he's, he's led our roster three years in a row for <laughs> scoring at this point, so I, I don't know if I expected anything less. Kempe with 44 points. Miav with 43 points. How many of those were with us? 15 points in 27 games. Okay. I mean, that's uh, I expected more goals than assists, but that's fine. Fantilli with 36 points. He's, he's fourth on our team. Nolan Foote, 33. Lundestrom, 33. Wright with 28. Just looking for prospects here, mostly. Uh, Cyrenek with 19. Coronado, 14. And then in goal, Frank Hu and Odinger, a 906, a 907. And then taking a look at Palm Springs, we have Vance Sickle down here. And actually, his potential dropped. So I don't know if that was the right move. So it looks like, yeah, we're going to we're gonna call him up to the NHL. And I, I probably shouldn't have sent him down, honestly. But I, I felt like, you know, he wasn't doing much up here. So I felt like maybe some time in the AHL would have done him some good. But apparently not, just based off his potential dropping. So... That's my bad. So I think with that, we'll leave it off here. Remember, hit like, subscribe, and in the next one, we will get on with the offseason of year number three. See you guys then.